Hi guys, I'm PK and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a bingo game in Unity. But the thing is I have already did the coding part. I'm just gonna show you what's in my scene and I'm going to explain you my code. I have uploaded my code in GitHub and the link is in my description below. Let's get started with the scene. I have a game manager on my scene and I have two I mean two different panels with a table, a turn icon and all these bingo letters are in one by one next to each other and in this table I have like buttons in it I have like 25 buttons in it and I have a script attached to it called generate numbers I'll explain the script to you later and uh, I have a grid layout group so that these buttons are arranged in a grid I just changed it to fixed column count and set it to 5 and everything was ok fine then I just duplicated this P1 and uh, placed it next to it and then renamed it as player2 to tell you about my code the first code I made was this generate number code in this generate numbers code I have uh, some arrays a list to hold my numbers and a few functions that controls some small changes of my game so the first thing that I have is a uh, text box array I'm just making an array and arranging it in order so that it won't be confusing to know which one is which the same way I have a button array I have these for a reason because I have a number and list I'm creating a list called numbers and at the beginning of my game I'm calling this function called player setup in my player setup I'm just adding numbers from 1 to 25 into my list so you know if we use a for loop and it just iterates one after the other so if i add uh, i with one it's gonna go like one to 24 will be 25 and after adding numbers into my list i'm just shuffling my list with this shuffle algorithm and after shuffling it i'm just adding it into the text boxes so the text box will be string right so i'm just using the dot to string to change integer into string and a reference to the game manager to announce the winner which will be used at the end game and then I have something called a mark space I'm just marking those mark spaces value to zero I'll show you what mark space is so we ha I have an array of 25 numbers mark spaces each time I click a button in my scene the mark space value will be turned into one so I'll just hit play so if I hit on element zero which is 21 I go like as you could see those mark spaces will be turning from 0 to 1 on each click and I can't click on the same number again because it is made unintractable if I have uh, an array full of I mean a row full of ones or a column full of ones or diagonals you will get to see get the uh, text below as you could see we have like a row and a diagonal so we have two letters we have nothing here so we don't have any even conditions happening around here <coughs> and then I have a function called set button uninteractable and using a passing in a parameter called integer number and I call this function on each of the buttons on click event so I could keep track of the button and disable the button you see on this button 1 and table 1 generate number set button and untractable here and I have given it an integer number like 0, 1, 2 and 3 so that it will be easy to keep track of which button or element I clicked and it will disable that number and after that I have this win condition so this win condition what it does is it calculates the mark spaces values in the order of the array we want it's more like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is uh, as you could see 0 1 2 3 4 like horizontal array I mean not array horizontal values by the same way I have like horizontal all five five rows so five rows five columns and two diagonals so I'm just calling my mark spaces with the element number and adding those values so I need like five right for each column row or diagonal values after making all these solutions I'm just putting together into an array and naming it solution of yes 1 to yes 12 
and I have a local variable called sum of mark spaces. I'm setting it to minus one because every element, the first element is an, in an array will be like the zeroth element, right? So that's why. And for each time I get a phi in any one of these solutions, I will just increment this mark sum of mark space to from minus one to I will just increment it so the minus one will be turned into zero. So after it turned in turning into zero, it will just set this bingo text to active so each time i pass in a mark each time the sum of mark space increases the next next letter will be popping up to be active so this is what in my generate numbers code now we'll see about the game manager so the game manager controls the flow of the game like if you click a number on player one the same number on player two will be disabled and also it takes care of the player icon which I want to be active and also I have another thing called uh, a block canvas which I have placed in front of each table so that the other players when it's a uh, player one's turn the player two table can't be interacted and vice versa so I'll just get into my script and show you what I have I have an integer turn we don't need this turn count I just added it accidentally but I didn't use it anywhere on my code and I have this game object array for turn icon and the players canvas block so the canvas block is this one which panel and I have a string called selector number so just to just keep track of what number I am selecting so that I could use this on both player 1 and player 2 during when I want to check which number I have selected I have a game setup in my start method so what my game setup does is when I hit play it just sets the player's turn into one I mean it just sets up the beginning of the game like it's player one's turn setting the player one icon into active and player two's canvas block into active so that I won't be able to click on player two so next I have is a grid button function in this grid button I'm just passing in the parameter integer called number so that it will be easy for me to get what number I'm using and in each of my button I have attached this I have called this an on click event to keep track of which button I'm clicking just like the generate numbers uninteractable function I'm just getting the player one component generate number script here and player two I'm just using get component in children because it's in the child of, of each player's each player object so what this grid button does is it just checks the other player's number and disable the other player if the turn is zero it will be player one's turn right so that's what i'm using it here if turn equal to zero i click on a button the turn will be set to one and the respective turn icon will be changed and the panel block panel will be changed and i'm just calling the player one here which I am getting the generate number script right and accessing its mark space number and setting it to 1 through game manager and then I am calling my selected number string here and then getting the number that I have in this I have in this player 1 and converting into text so that I could see it on my panel like on which button I have clicked so that I could see it in my panel like which button I have clicked 15, 5, right next I have to access in, I have to get access to the player 2 stable, right so I am just getting the text box length of player 2 and using a for loop I am just getting into this player 2's text box and just selecting, I am just checking if the number matches with the selector number matches with this variable number and if it matches just a uh, disable the player once disable player 2 button and change player 2's mark space to 1 and then call the win condition and after finishing all this it will just check the win condition on and after finishing all this it will just check the player 1 respective player's win condition and then pop out the letter B I N G O one after the other so I have the same in my else statement I'm just doing the opposite of if it's player 1's turn 
if it's player 2 turn just changing it to player 1 change the setting the respective icon active and the panel checking the player 2's number with player 1's number and disabling it disabling the button and setting the mark space value to 1 and then running the player 2's win condition on player 2 so each time whenever I click on a button for example I click on this 11 it executes a code and I get this 11 and it will check on the player input value And after getting BA on zero, after getting all these five textures active, we could just run an in-game function like announcing the winner on each of my player from the respective player itself. That's why I'm calling this function on each player's turn. And one of the reason I'm calling this function on each player's turn is because the win condition will be run separately instead of checking on both players at the same time so if it's player 1's turn the player 1 check for its win condition if it's player 2's turn it will check for the player 2's win condition and if i get all these 5 textures active 5 text to be active i could just make an in-game function and then open a new panel and announce who's the winner I just forgot to say something you could still have like three tables on your screen and still try to make it work but the thing is you can play with only two tables the numbers can still generate on three tables just I'll show you if I hit play see all three tables have different different icons in it and we have like it won't work that's all for today guys see you in my next video see you soon bye